Florida's soft sands and warm waters provide some of the most important habitat in the world for five species of sea turtles. The leatherback, the largest and most ancient of the species, green, which are mainly vegetarians, hawksbill, whose beautiful shell has been prized for centuries, Kemp's Ridley, the rarest and smallest species, and the loggerhead, the most common species in Florida. At the Sea Turtle Conservancy in Gainesville, Florida, I caught up with David Godfrey to talk turtles. You know, there, we're seeing right now in Florida and, and in other places in the United States, um, the, some very encouraging trends in turtle population numbers. So last year, for example, was a record year uh, for green turtle nesting in this state. That began with the Endangered Species Act. And when all species of sea turtles were included under federal protection by the Endangered Species Act in the mid-1970s, that made it so that you couldn't go out and harvest turtles for consumption. You couldn't go out and take their shells anymore. You couldn't use them for meat. Um, and, and at that time, I mean, turtles were on the menu everywhere, green turtles in particular. Through the ages, sea turtles have been killed for just about everything you can think of. The beautiful shell of the hawksbill led to their downfall. This confiscated turtle was stuffed to be a wall ornament. And using their shell for jewelry is where the tortoiseshell style came from. These boots were made from turtle flippers. Even the oils from turtle fat were used in face cream. So the passage of, of the Endangered Species Act stopped our direct harvesting of them and gave them a fighting chance. Since that time, a lot of work has been done to um, change human behavior, um, to protect important nesting sites, to identify other sources of mortality, like interactions with commercial fisheries, in particular shrimp trawls, and things like our behavior on the beach at night, you know, uh, lighting up the beach with our homes and condos. Um, we've learned a lot about the things that we do that harm these animals, and, and Protecting them really began with that Endangered Species Act. Now let's explore shrimp trawls and turtle excluder devices. Since sea turtles must surface to breathe air, they easily drown when caught in nets, unable to reach the surface. When nets are outfitted with turtle excluder devices, sea turtles and other animals can be shuttled out of the net instead of dying as bycatch. Most shrimp trawls in the southeastern U.S. are required to use turtle excluder devices, but not all do. Let's see it in action. The shrimp trawl scours the coastal bottom. A sea turtle has been captured, where it will drown if it does not get out. Instead of getting trapped in the end of the net, it gets pushed up against the bars, allowing it to use the escape hatch. By increasing the use of these devices, as well as modifications to longline fishing, more sea turtles will live another day. Back on land, a different type of innovative solution is turtle-safe lighting. Traditional lighting is prevalent on Florida's coasts and can distract and disorient sea turtles, leading to injury and death. Turtle-safe lights, however, use longer wavelengths of lights in the red-orange spectrum and have little effect on sea turtles, allowing their natural instincts to be fulfilled. This business is one of many that has made the switch to turtle-safe lights. Now that we see how turtle excluder devices and turtle-safe lights can make significant impacts, let's explore just how important nests are in conservation efforts.